بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم اسلام علیکم پویٹری ون کورس کوڈ فور زیرو تری لیکچر تھرٹین وی ہیو فینیشڈ ویڈ دی ٹیکسٹ آف دی فیری گوین وی ہیو سین دیٹ ایٹ واز سیمپل سٹوری ویل ہیو لٹل ری کیپ آف دی پویٹ دی کریکٹرسٹک فیچرز آف دی ایج اینڈ دین وی ویل سی دیٹ وٹ آر دی ڈیفرنٹ اینگلز اینڈ دی پرسپیکٹیز فرام وچ وی کین اسٹڈی دی ٹیکسٹ Edmund Spencer, as we discussed, was a great, greatest poet of the English Renaissance. Uh, he was a great humanist. He was a patriotic person. He was very skillful in his art as far as the art of poet, writing poetry is concerned. He was a lover of the physical beauty also. He talked about, he discussed the different things. He described the scenes in his poetry, the way it is, um, it, uh, he, the way he saw them, the way he um, saw the things around happening. He explained them. he described them as they are we discussed earlier also that humanism is a belief in uh, man's um, consciousness um, man is given importance and it is a revival of uh, classical learning it is a rebirth of classical learning and during this time there was a Uh, there was um, an urge for the patriotic feelings also that uh, everybody desired for even in the rel religious uh, from the religious perspective people wanted to have uh, their own uh, uh, religious uh, because they were people wanted to have uh, their own religious institution they were against the authority of the roman catholic church Uh, he is skillful in his art of poetry uh, because of a number of things as we saw that he had written his poetry the fairy queen in uh, spenserian stanza so he invented he experimented with the language he invented new things he um, he used language uh, to suit her, his purpose اس نے اس کو اپنے مقصد کے مطابق استعمال کرتے ہوئے اس کو مولڈ کیا ہے اور اس طریق اس طریقے سے اسے پیش کیا ہے کہ ہم اس کی جو سکل ہے اس کا جو کرافٹ ہے وی اکنالج دیٹ اینڈ ہی از الاور آف دی فزیکل بیوٹی ہی ہیز ڈسکرائبڈ دی سینز ان ہیز پوئٹری دین وین وی لک ایٹ چوسر ایز اے پوئٹ ہیز انڈیویجولیٹی از ایویڈنٹ فرام اے نمبر آف Um, perspectives uh, if you look at his poetry when we read his poetry we see that um, he has written in spenserian stanza this is his own, own innovation so spenserian stanza as we discussed earlier also that he had uh, written the fairy queen in spenserian stanza uh, each stanza consists of nine lines the first eight lines are written in iambic pentameter and the ninth line is written in alexandrine and it is the concluding line it is the most significant line and it is the it is um, the longest of all the other lines because in iambic pentameter there are 10 syllables and alexand in alexandrine it contains 12 syllables so there are two syllables that are extra at the end of every line then he makes use of archaic language archaic is archaic refers to the obsolete outdated bahut purani jo language hoti hai jisko koi because language with the passage of time change hoti rehti hai wo language jo bahut purani ho chuke ho kyunki language mein har tarah ke changes aate hain there are changes in the spellings morphology mein words ki shapes mein to usne uh, archaic language aise vocabulary items use kiye hain jo past mein use hote the lekin ab unki jagah naye lafzon ne le liye to spencer ne un this is another uh, particular فیچر آف ہز رائٹنگ ہم جب ہم اس کی پوئٹری پڑھتے ہیں تو ایک سیکنڈ فیچر جو اس کا آتا ہے پہلا تو اس کی جو انڈیویجولیٹی ہے اس کی اپنی ایک کریشن ہے کہ اس نے ایک اسپینسیرین اسٹینزا انٹروڈیوس کروایا کہ ورس میں تو پہلے بھی پوئٹری لکھی جاتی تھی لیکن اس نے ایک جو اس کو ایک انڈیویجول ٹچ دیا جو اس کو جس طریقے سے ڈفرنٹ طریقے سے پیش کیا وہ اس کی اس کی اسٹینزا کی فارم ڈفرنٹ تھی اور اسی لیے اس کو اسپینسر کے نام سے جو ہے وہ معصوم کیا جاتا ہے وہ اسپینسیرین اسٹینزا کہلاتا ہے کیونکہ اسپینسر اس کو انوویٹ کرنے والا تھا اس کو ایجاد کرنے والا تھا سو so, وہ جو آر کے ایک لفظ ہیں جو آبسولیٹ آؤٹ ڈیٹڈ ورڈز ہیں فار ایگزامپل اسپینسر واز رائٹنگ ان دی لیٹ ہاف آف دی سکسٹینتھ سینچری ناؤ ان سکسٹینتھ سینچری تھنگس ور ناٹ ایز دے آر ناؤ اس وقت جو لینگویج یوز ہوتی تھی وہ 
ابھی بھی اس وقت نہیں ہے وہ لینگویج جو اس وقت جو ورڈز استعمال ہوتے تھے جو ورڈز کے میننگ ہوتے تھے وہ اب اس طرح کے نہیں ہیں سپینسر نے یہی کیا ہے وہ جب لکھ رہا تھا تو اس سے پہلے جو لینگویج آرکیک تھی جو پرابلی تھرٹین فورٹین سینچری میں یوز ہوتی تھی اس نے وہ لینگویج یوز کی ہے اپنی پویٹری میں تو ہر زمانے میں کیونکہ لینگویج چینج ہوتی رہتی ہے وہ اس میں مختلف طرح کے چینجز آتے رہتے ہیں اور کچھ وکیبلری آئیٹمز ایسے ہوتے ہیں جو with the passage of time جو obsolete ہو جاتے ہیں اور ان کی جگہ کچھ اور نئے ورڈز لے لیتے ہیں یا بعض اوقات ایسا ہوتا ہے کہ لینگویج میں دو ایک ہی دو ورڈز ہوتے ہیں جن کے ایک ہی میننگ ہوتے ہیں ایک ورڈ جو ہے وہ لینگویج میں لوگ یوز کرتے رہتے ہیں اور دوسرے کو جب یوز نہیں کرتے ہیں over a period of years sometimes decades تو وہ ورڈ جو ہے وہ آرکیک بن جاتے ہیں جب اس کو لوگ یوز کرنا چھوڑ دیتے ہیں تو after centuries it becomes an آرکیک ورڈ کیونکہ وہ پرانا obsolete ہو چکا ہوتا ہے جس کو past میں یوز کیا جاتا تھا لیکن اس وقت جب modern times میں اس کو نہیں یوز کیا جاتا ہوگا تو اسی طرح سے سپینسر نے آرکے ایک لینگویج کا یوز کیا ہے اپنی پویٹری میں and that we have seen in the fairy queen also that he had used آرکے ایک لینگویج moreover he had used the original spellings yes this is another particular feature of his poetry that he preferred to use the original spellings of the words then his punctuations his punctuation is different from um, the ordinary punctuation and the way he has written his poetry in the stanza form and uh, writing it in uh, not only in stanza form the iambic pentameter and alexandrine and saying something particular in that last uh, concluding line in that alexandrine meter so his punctuation is also different from simple verses it is different from um, the poetry of other poets who were writing in the same era so that also makes him stand out among his com contemporaries moreover his rhymes um, the poetry that Spencer had produced it has got a musical quality Usme usne um, rhyming use ki hai uski rhyme scheme different hai we discussed earlier also that we and we discussed that how to find out the rhyme scheme of a particular stanza us kis tarha se jo do lines rhyme ka rahi hongi unko ek hi letter attribute kiya jayega aur jo rhyme nahi karega usko usse agla letter phir jo usse bhi different hoga usse usse bhi agla letter so it is like a b a b or a b b a a b b c c like this so the rhyme scheme is another particular feature so he has got his distinctive style of rhyming the lines etymologies he mentions the etymologies of words for example he uses certain references from um, from uh, mythology uh, certain references from greek and latin language and he mentions the uh, the etymology also that it refers to this for example the god god of uh, uh, war or the goddess of uh, beauty he mentions the etymologies uh, so he brings in it this is also one of the particular feature of his poetry that he brings in the etymologies of of words that he uses in his um, poetry in his lines then his lines have got the musical effects it it is very his lines the poetry is very melodious it has got the musical quality بلکل اسی طریقے سے لگتا ہے کہ شاید یہ اورل ٹریڈیشن کے لیے بنے کیونکہ یوزلی جو اپک پوئیمز ہیں جو پوئیمز ہیں they used to be sung in the older times ایسا لگتا ہے کہ اس نے ردمیلکل فارم میں پویٹری کو اس طرح سے ترتیب دیا گیا ہے کہ شاید یہ اس کو گایا جانا تھا so it has got the musical effect he has used the words and certain literary devices in such a way that it has made the poetry very melodious and musical in its nature once again if we have a recap of fairy queen spencer he admitted that he was going to write down the fairy queen 
to teach how a virtuous man should live, how a pious, a noble man should live. Spencer expressed this idea in a letter that he wrote to Sir Walter Raleigh and that letter was uh, published in the preface to 1590s edition and six books of the Fairy Queen were published uh, by 1599. It is uh, written in the form of an allegory where the whole story stands for, um, whole, whole story represents the double meaning. The Fairy Queen as an allegory, there are different characters in the Fairy Queen as we have read book 1, Canto 1. In Canto 1 we, had, uh, the red, we have read about the Red Cross Knight who represents holiness. We have read about Lady Una uh, who is another character who accompanied the Red Cross Knight. She represented truth or true religion. Um, and then we had the portrayal of Roman Catholic Church as the villain because uh, we find that uh, uh, in some of the incidents we find that um, he had the hatred for the Roman Catholic Church and the teachings and the clergymen who belonged to the Ro uh, Roman Catholic Church. For example, in the incident when the monster um, vomited out the material it was all filthy and foul smell. It was full of uh, uh, papers and books. Now, what, what do those papers and books, they symbolize? And the blood was as black as ink. All these things, they symbolize the, uh, uh, the teachings of the Roman Catholic Church. And this shows his hatred that it, it smelled so foul and filthy. It was so dirty. So it all showed his um, his attitude towards the Roman Catholic Church. Uh, moreover, uh, there were toads and frogs who were uh, who did not have eyes. So this shows um, this represents the clergymen of that who belong to the Roman Catholic Church. So uh, this all shows his attitude towards the his uh, hatred towards the Roman Catholic Church. Now, the, um, another important aspect uh, from which we can uh, look at the fairy queen, uh, the f most important thing when we begin with the text, uh, invocation. They can be, this is uh, one important aspect. It just contains, there are just four stanzas. So, it's just four stanzas and every stanza has nine lines. Uh, in total, it makes it 36 lines, but this is one of the important aspects of the Fairy Queen that uh, there can be a full-fledged, it can be a full-fledged full topic to be discussed. Invocation is basically a help that the writers, the poets take while taking up some task that they think that uh, they, this is something of a uh, greater importance, of a great, grand stature. They take help from the goddesses, from different gods and goddesses. First, in uh, the Fairy Queen, uh, when we read the text, we found that, uh, first of all, there was introduction. Um, Spencer ने एक brief introduction दिया है कि इससे पहले उसने किस तरह की poetry लिखी थी और अब वो क्या लिखने जा रहा है तो उसमें उसने बताया है कि earlier he was writing Shepherd's Shepherd's poetry and his instrument was also that of Shepherd's poetry जो कि उसके मुताबिक suitable था that was Oton Reed's Oton Reed जो है वो Shepherd का instrument है on the other hand he stated that now he is going to replace his Oton reed with the trumpet. वो जो एक शेफर्ड का इंस्ट्रूमेंट था, he said कि अब मैं वो छोड़कर मैं ट्रम्पेट लेना चाहता हूँ क्योंकि ट्रम्पेट जो है ये या अपने इंस्ट्रूमेंट को उससे रिप्लेस करना चाहता हूँ क्योंकि अब मैं ग्रेट वॉरियर्स और किंग्स और उनकी उनके डीड्स ऑफ वेलर के बारे में बात करना चाहता हूँ। Now he is changing his subject matter. He has stated clearly that what he had written early is different from what he is going to write now. After telling the subject matter, the theme of his poem very clearly, he um, begins with the invocation. He seeks help. First of all, he seeks help from Cleo, who is the goddess of history. And there are nine muses of history. Uh, there are nine muses or nine goddesses. Cleo is the chief of them. Is uh, the supreme of them all. So first of all he seeks help from Cleo 
and who is the goddess of history. He says that there have been um, noble kings and uh, warriors and soldiers whose praise nobody had ever talked about, nobody had sung their praise. So I am going to talk about their uh, deeds of bravery and valor. So he seeks help from Cleo that those parts of history, I am weak, my pen, my speech is dull and I do not have that strength to talk about such um, deeds of um, highest rank. So he seeks help from Cleo, the goddess of history, and asks her to help her write down um, about those warriors and soldiers. Then he seeks help from Cupid, the god of love. He asks, he says that it is uh, because of you that um, people fall in love and uh, he uh, invokes in the name of Cupid and he says that you should come with your mother and Mars and his um, Cupid is the son of uh, Jove and Venus. Venus is the goddess of beauty. He says that um, the goddess of beauty and Cupid should also come to his help. Then uh, he talks about Mars. He says that uh, Cupid and Venus should come and bring with you Mars also. Mars is the god of war. He says that bring with you uh, Mars also in good mood, in good kind mood so that I take help from you. So uh, uh, not only one muse, he is seeking help from different gods and goddesses. Cleo, the goddess of history, then Cupid, the god of love, Venus, the goddess of beauty, Mars, the god of war, and finally uh, he seeks help from the queen. And he, here it says that um, sovereign queen and of the greatest isle. Greatest isle here is a reference to the British island and the queen of the island is Queen Elizabeth. So he, he invokes not only in the names of gods and goddesses, he also seeks help from the queen. Invocation ek kisi bhi poem ka, kyunki us waqt ye tradition thi ke log epic poetry likh rahe the. Epic is a genre of poetry. Abhi hum um, is invocation ke baad hum epic poetry ki baad karenge. Us waqt ek tradition thi ke jab bhi uh, poets koi aisa kaam karne ja rahe hote jinke jiske liye unko lagta tha ke unke unko bahut zyada knowledge ki zarurat hai ya bahut zyada کہ وہ ٹاسک ایسا ہے کہ جس میں ان کو کسی کی مدد کی ضرورت ہے تو وہ گارڈز اور گارڈسز سے انووک کرتے تھے ان سے ہیلپ مانگتے تھے سو سپینسر آلسو کیپنگ دیٹ ٹریڈیشن آف ہیز ٹائم ہی ہیز آلسو انووکڈ ان دی نیم آف دی میوزز اینڈ ہی ہیڈ ناٹ انووکڈ ان نیم آف ون میوز دیر آر نمبر آف دیم دیر از کلیو دی گاڈ آف ہسٹری کیوپیڈ دی گاڈ آف لو وینس دی گاڈ آف بیوٹی مارس دی گاڈ آف وار اینڈ دی کوین دیٹ ریفرس ٹو کوین الزبت سو انوکیشن از این امپارٹنٹ پارٹ اور ان صرف چار اسٹینزاز کے اوپر ایک اٹ میکس اے پرسپیکٹو ایک پورا سبجیکٹ ہے ایک ٹاپک ہے ڈسکشن کا جس کے جس کے اندر بہت سی چیزیں ڈسکس ہو سکتی ہیں جس میں بہت سارے ریفرنسز کوٹ کیے جا سکتے ہیں ان گاڈز اینڈ گاڈسز کا اینڈ کیپنگ ان ویو دا ٹریڈیشن آف دی ٹائم رینیسا میں اور ناٹ اونلی رینیسا اٹ واز اے ٹریڈیشن بیسیکلی فالوڈ بائی ورجل اینڈ ہومو ان دیئر ایپک پوئمس سپینسر نے بھی اسی کو کاپی کیا ہے اسی کو رول ماڈل کے طور پر لیا ہے اور اس ٹریڈیشن کو قائم رکھتے ہوئے اس نے اپنی پوئم میں بھی یوز کیا ہے اور اس نے بہت ساری ٹریڈیشنز جس میں ٹریڈیشنز ویرجل اور ہومر کی اپنی پوئم میں بھی یوز کی ہیں سو اٹ واز سو دس واز بائی کیپنگ پیس ود دی ٹریڈیشن آف دی ٹائم جس طرح سے اور لوگ پوئٹری لکھ رہے تھے وہ بھی انوکیشن یوز کر رہے تھے اپنی پوئٹری میں سپینسر ہیز کیپٹ دا سیم سنس ہی تھاٹ دیٹ ہی واز گوئنگ ٹو انڈر ٹیک اے ٹاسک دیٹ واز آف گریٹ سگنیفیکنس کیونکہ اس کی نیشنل سگنیفیکنس بھی ہے ہسٹوریکل بھی ہے مارل بھی ہے ریلیجس بھی ہے سنس اٹ از این الیگری اور جو کہ ہر لیول پر ڈیل کر رہی ہے ہمیں اس میں ہسٹوریکل ریفرنسز بھی ملتے ہیں ہسٹوریکل فگرز بھی ہیں اس میں پولیٹیکل ریفرنسز بھی ہیں اس میں ریلیجس ریفرنسز ہیں اس میں مارل ریفرنسز بھی ہیں تو اس لحاظ سے اس نے اس میں ہی 
the stature of the poem was great. इसका scale जो है ये बहुत बड़े पैमाने पर एक poem लिखने जा रहा था. इसलिए उसने invocation, उसने invocation को include किया है as the beginning of the poem. और invocation के बाद Canto one start होता है and invocation is an integral part of an epic poem. After invocation, the text of the poem it formally begins. Invocation once again it is help from some god or goddess or some living being, somebody who is very influential. वो इंसान जो के हेल्प कर सकता है, like the queen. In those days, queen since it is it has got the patriotic element also in that because it talks about the greatest isle, the British island and the queen. So it it has got that patriotic element also. And even the knight in the poem is very faithful. He is loyal to the place he where he is, and he is loyal to the queen who has assigned him the task, Queen Gloriana. So all this shows the patriotic uh, touch in the poem. After invocation, we move on to the so uh, invocation basically sets a background. It has got a certain purpose. It sets the background for the entire poem because after invocation there are uh, twelve cantos to come. In a, uh, there are first there are first twelve books, and in those twelve books. Uh, there are 12 parts, 12 cantos. Uh, the plan was for 12 books, but uh, in the, uh, the writer could uh, complete only 6 of the books and those 6 books were published. So this invocation, these 4 stanzas, they set up a background, they set up a layout for the 6 books. And in each book there are 12 cantos. So invocation is an important part of his poetry. No matter there are only uh, four stanzas of invocation. It consists of only 36 line, lines. But these 36 lines are very important that it states clearly that what he is going to talk about, the theme of the poem, the theme of the entire poem. Later on, it um, uh, the writer discloses uh, his topic of uh, writing the poem, he tells clearly that he is going to shift from um, pastoral poetry to the, uh, uh, to the epic form which is something great in its stature, something of great significance. Now we come to what is an epic. An epic is a long narrative poem about a hero containing the following elements. Now uh, there are certain requirements for writing an epic. An ep there are th there are certain elements, and e any epic must have all these elements. What are these elements? In media res, uh, we will discuss in detail that what does it mean. An invocation to the muse, battles, supernatural elements journeys, descent to the underworld and epic similes. We will discuss all these things one by one. So first of all it should be a long narrative poem. Uh, usually epics contains books and within those books there are certain parts. Since the fairy queen consisted of six books and each book consisted of 12 cantos. So um, and it is in the, the story is in the form of narration. It describes some journey, some, uh, some incident is included in that. And it should contain parts, books and parts. So uh, the fairy queen, if we look at the fairy queen, it contains, uh, it has got six books and each book contains six, uh, 12 cantos. So this really uh, shows that the fairy queen if we look at the length and the narration of the fairy queen, uh, we really find that it is a, it has got a story, it is a narration, it is long also, it is divided into different books and in the form of different cantos also. So uh, the fairy queen is an epic in this regard. Another important ingredient of uh, uh, ele or element of uh, an epic is a great leader who is identified strongly with a particular people or society. So there should be a brave person, a great soldier or a hero and who should be larger than life. Larger than life, it uh, refers to 
the strength of the person that he should not be any ordinary person वो कोई आम इंसान नहीं हो सकता epic का hero कोई आम इंसान नहीं है उसकी qualities या उसकी strength या उसका valor इस कदर है कि वो आम इंसानों से बहुत बढ़कर है किसी supernatural इंसान की तरह जिसके पास extraordinary qualities हैं जो हर किस्म के situation में triumphant है जो हर situation में conqueror है and embodies and what are the qualities that he must possess he must be loyal he, loyalty is one of the prerequisite for the soldier for the hero of an epic he must have valor and courage he should have a sense of justice he must be dignified he should have some dignity persistence in his actions and many other traits of his culture and time and the qualities that are suitable according to the time and according to the place where he is living so all these things they are a prerequisite for the hero of an epic epic ka jo hero hai usme har तरह की क्वालिटीज होनी चाहिए वो कोई आम इंसान नहीं हो सकता वो उसमें डिग्निटी भी हो सेल्फ रिस्पेक्ट भी हो परसिस्टेंस भी हो लॉयल हो हर किसी के साथ सिंसेयर हो फेथफुल हो बहुत हार्ड वर्किंग हो हर उसमें और उसकी स्ट्रेंथ इस कदर हो कि वो एक आम इंसान से बहुत बढ़कर हो और हर तरह की सिचुएशन में वो विक्टोरियस हो वो फतेहयाब हो in uh, fairy queen we find that prince arthur is uh, represented as the uh, great soldier but we find that in these 12 books so there is a little bit of the drawback also that in fairy queen in 12 books in every book we have a different uh, soldier we have a different knight so uh, a soldier is there a greater a larger than life person a hero is present there so um, a f the fairy queen can be considered as an epic poem in medias res medias res uh, basically refers to the middle that it, this is a latin term and its meaning is in the middle of things the epic begins in medias res and then flashes back to events that took place before the narrator's current time setting for example we read the text of the fairy queen and we found that the knight and uh, lady una they were riding they were on their way to uh, to an adventure now what was that adventure and why they had undertaken that adventure ab kis maqsad ke liye wo ja rahe the journey wo shuru ho chuki thi so Um, हमें ये पता चलता है कि फेरी क्वीन में भी एक्शन के दरमियान में हमें स्टार्ट हुआ है हमें इस जो बिगनिंग है हमें वहां पर पता चलता है कि नाइट जा रहा है किसी एडवेंचर पर किसी जर्नी पर जा रहा है उसके साथ लेडी ऊना भी है डॉफ भी है लैम भी है नाउ व्हाट इज द रीजन वजह क्या है वो लोग कहाँ जा रहे हैं आ, आ, हुआ क्या है वो हमें अभी नहीं पता चलता लेटर ऑन जब हमें लेडी ऊना की डिस्क्रिप्शन बताई गई है कि वो किस तरह की है किस फैमिली से आई है उस वक्त ये डिस्क्राइब किया जा रहा है कि लेडी ऊना जो है वो रॉयल फैमिली से थी और एक ड्रैगन ने उनके कासल पे कब्जा कर लिया सो आफ्टर वर्ड्स हमें नरेशन के थ्रू ये बताया जा रहा है कि ये हुआ था और हु हैज असाइंड दिस टास्क किसने उनको ये काम कहा है क्यों ग्लोरियाना ने कहा है वो चीजें सारी फ्लैश बैक के थ्रू बाद में बताई जा रही हैं कि असल में हुआ क्या था सीन क्या था बिल्कुल स्टार्ट से शुरू नहीं हुआ सो दिस इज कॉल्ड मीडिया स्ट्रेस दिस इज एनदर इम्पॉर्टेंट कैरेक्टरिस्टिक फीचर ऑफ एन एपिक क्या इसमें यह होता है कि स्टोरी दरमियान में से शुरू हो रही है और बाद में जब किसी और चीज के डिस्क्रिप्शन के साथ हमें फ्लैशबैक के थ्रू बताया जाता है कि ये इंसिडेंट हुआ था जिसकी वजह से ये सारा कुछ हो रहा है अब इसमें हमें पता चलता है नाइट जा रहा है अब नाइट कहाँ जा रहा है क्या वजह है अब उसको क्वीन ग्लोरियाना ने भेजा है किस लिए भेजा है क्या हुआ था लेडी उना के पेरेंट्स को क्या हुआ था उनकी सल्तनत कहाँ पे थी उनको किसने वहां से बेदखल किया ऐसी किसी चीज का हमें शुरू में नहीं पता चलता वी गेट टू नो अबाउट दैट आफ्टर वी हैव द डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ लेडी उना फर्स्ट और उस डिस्क्रिप्शन में हमें पता चलता है कि उसके पेरेंट्स थे एंड दे रूल्ड ओवर दी वर्ल्ड और एक ड्रैगन ने उनकी सल्तनत पर कब्जा किया और उनको वहां से निकाल दिया गया था तो अब नाइट उनको रेस्क्यू करने के लिए लेडी उना के फादर का कासल रिकवर करने के लिए जा रहा है सो द फेरी क्वीन बिगिन इन द मिडल ये दिस कैरेक्टरिस्टिक इज प्रेजेंट इन दी 
uh, text of the fairy queen since we have read book one it begins in the middle of it invocation to the muse as we discussed in detail earlier also that invocation refers to seeking of help from gods and goddesses spencer invokes the muse to help him he invokes in the name of the muses not only one muse he invokes in the name of a number of muses first he states that uh, the kind of poetry he is going to write he say, uh, he clearly mentions the theme that he is going to change the topic of his uh, poetry because earlier he used to write pastoral poetry and now he is going to talk about the uh, deeds of great warriors he is going to talk about them then he invokes in the name of muse first of all he talks about the muse of history cleo he refers to her and all these are the um, mythological references he invokes in the name of the um, goddess of history cleo he invokes in the name of cupid the god of love he invokes in the name of um, the god of uh, goddess of beauty venus he invokes in the name of the god of war Uh, Mars. Finally, last but not least, he invokes in the name of Queen Elizabeth, uh, the Queen of England, to help him to write down um, this poetry, this which has got a uh, great significance, which is of great stature. Its uh, political, historical lehas se bhi ek greater significance hai, and he thinks that uh, he alone cannot write, undertake this task. He alone cannot uh, write this poetry. वो खुद से ये नहीं कर सकता इसलिए वो इन सब म्यूजिक से और क्वीन एलिजाबेथ से हेल्प मांग रहा है कि मेरी मदद की जाए मैं एक काम करने जा रहा हूं उसने हिस्ट्री के लिए जो है वो क्लेओ म्यूज ऑफ हिस्ट्री से मदद मांगी है फिर क्यूपेड मार्स और वीनस से हेल्प मांगी है देन फाइनली फ्रॉम क्वीन एलिजाबेथ ऑल्सो सो he invokes in the name of muse विच इज वन ऑफ द ग्रेट कैरेक्टरिस्टिक फीचर ऑफ एन एपिक पोइम then battle or another important ingredient of uh, an epic is uh, battle or deeds of valor it uh, does great deeds in battle or undertakes an extraordinary journey or quest so the hero in the epic undertakes a journey or a quest and in and has some battles the knight undertakes the journey and has to fight against the monster and the magician now uh, apparently in, in book 1 we had two um, battles one was against an apparent danger and apparent enemy that was the monster the uh, knight had to fight against the monster and the monster was uh, very strong it was huge it was very ugly and uh, it was very powerful but on the other hand since the knight was a hero of an epic hero hone ki wajah se usne us par kabu paya na sirf kabu paya usko bure tarike se shikast di aur usko maar diya moreover uh, the second battle was against the magician who was uh, who represented hypocrisy now this fight was not uh, क्लियर uh, फाइट ये कोई जाहिरी जंग नहीं थी क्योंकि दुश्मन जो था वो छुपा हुआ था और वो छुप कर अटैक कर रहा था बट इट वाज नॉट सक्सेसफुल क्योंकि मजिशियन uh, ने अब जो दो स्पिरिट्स भेजी थी नाइट के पास एक उसके उसको डिस्टर्ब करने के लिए ड्रीम्स में टू ब्रिंग हिम फॉल्स ड्रीम्स और दूसरी जो है उसको एज डिस्काइज लेडी उना बनाकर भेजा था लेकिन uh, जो नाइट है उसने अपने uh, अपने ऊपर कंट्रोल रखा उसने पहले उसको मारना भी चाह के वॉट शी इज डूइंग इट वॉज नॉट फिट फॉर लेडी यूना कि वो किस तरीके से बिहेव कर रही थी दिस वॉज समथिंग स्ट्रेंज इन एक्स्ट्रॉर्डनरी फॉर द नाइट क्योंकि लेडी यूना एक बहुत नोबल लेडी थी एंड शी हैड डिसेंडेड फ्रॉम अ रॉयल फैमिली सो ही कंट्रोल्ड हिमसेल्फ एंड ही डिड नॉट डू एनी थिंग बैड एंड लेटर ऑन वी फाइंड दैट ही वॉज एबल टू कीप अ कंट्रोल ओवर हिमसेल्फ एंड ही लेफ्ट द प्लेस फाइनली टू वर्ड्स दी एंड ऑफ बुक वन then supernatural elements another important uh, element of an epic is the inclusion of the gods or other supernatural or fantastic beings take part in the action of the story when we read the text of the fairy queen 
there are spirits the magician in um, calls upon some spirits so this is the inclusion of the supernatural machinery in the uh, in the poem so this is an important element and even the presence or uh, the calling upon of gods and goddesses that also the spirit moves to the god of sleep so the inclusion of god and the spirits all this represents the inclusion of supernatural elements in the poem journeys the setting is broad and often includes supernatural realms especially the land of the dead uh, journey it uh, yes um, in the when we read the text of the fairy queen we find there is a journey the knight and lady una they are going on their way to find some adventure and th um, that is the first journey because they are looking up for some adventure and moreover they are lo um, the journey of the spirit to the underworld that is also so there are two types of journey one the apparent journey and then the journey of the spirit to the underworld to bring the false dream to the, to the magician to his to its lord so there are two types of journey the underworld journey and the apparent journey of night and lady una so this is another important element of epic epic similes epic similes are usually the extended similes lab they are elaborately extended comparisons relating heroic events to simple everyday events using like as so and just as so in the poem in the fairy queen at a number of places we find the use of different uh, literary devices and we sh you find different simile used at a number of places and uh, here i would give just one example um, when the knight gets hold of the monster's stomach and uh, after that there is a simile the right uh, the poet uh, likens the scene to the simile of the river nile that when there is a flood in the river nile it leaves behind the fertile soil so that when the crops are grown it's they are very good so um, the writer uses spencer has used extended similes in the fairy queen this is another important element of a of an epic Lit the use of literary devices epithet epithet is a descriptive phrase that presents a particular trait of a person or thing it can be a quick aid to characterization so epithet is used to so um, it basically refers to a phrase in which the adjectives are used to characterize the situation the second important literary device in this regard we have is the transferred epithet and at a number of places uh, uh, spencer has used uh, transferred epithet in the fairy queen when the characteristic feature of one thing attributed is attributed to the other for example uh, the word the uh, phrase very night um, it is there in the text uh, now night is not very very is tired exhausted in this is not night that gets exhausted these are the people who get exhausted these are the living beings who get exhausted at another place probably it says that drowsy uh, sleep drowsy night no night cannot be drowsy these are people who feel drowsy because of the fatigue because of the exertion so these phrases they show that in this basically the characteristic feature of a living being are transferred to something that is not capable of that feeling a night is not capable of being weary night jo hai wo kabhi thak nahi sakti hai wo kabhi udaas nahi hogi wo kabhi drowsy nahi feel karegi lekin jab wo usko hum usme use karte that means we are injecting the feelings of human beings jo unki feelings hai jo insanon ki us waqt feeling hai wo hum night ko at tribute kar rahe hain so these are all the characteristic elements of an epic when we read the text of the fairy queen Uh, at a number of places it's not only that we find all the elements of epic only sometimes it is also argued that um, the 
characteristic features that Spencer has used in his poem, whether it should be called a romance or an epic. Let's see what are the differences in an epic or a romance. Now the difference between epic and romance, if we look at the three things, the hero, the importance of the hero and the structure of the poem, um, the differences would be very clear. In an epic, there is only one person whose um, deeds uh, are focused. But in a romance, there are a number of people whose uh, actions are focused. अब रोमांस और एपिक में एक मेजर डिफरेंस ये है कि एपिक में सिर्फ एक हीरो है लेकिन जो रोमांस है इट फोकसेस ऑन ऑन दी डीड्स ऑफ अ नंबर ऑफ कैरेक्टर्स वो बहुत सारे लोगों के एक्शंस को फोकस करता है मोर ओवर व्हेन वी टॉक ऑफ दी इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ हीरो दोनों रोमांस में और एपिक में बहुत डिफरेंस है एपिक का जो हीरो है उसकी इम्पॉर्टेंस जो है वो नेशनल सिग्निफिकेंस है उसकी नेशनल सिग्निफिकेंस है उसका जो हीरो है वो पेट्रियाटिक है वो उसकी हिस्टोरिकल सिग्निफिकेंस भी है ऑन द अदर हैंड जो रोमांस का हीरो है वो फिक्टिशियस है वो राइटर की इमेजिनेशन से क्रिएट करता है उसको बनाया गया है उसको राइटर ने अपनी सोच के मुताबिक तखलीक किया है when we look at the structure of the uh, epic and romance once again there is a difference that uh, in an epic the, there is complete unity in the structure of an epic but the structure of a romance is a bit loose it, it does not have the kind of unity that an epic can have now if we look at uh, the fairy queen in it is a long narrative poem okay fine that is one of the characteristic feature of an epic poem but an epic deals with the um, deeds of bravery and valor of one person only the fairy queen in fairy queen each book has got a different hero so in this regard uh, but the different parts of the same book they have got the same hero so in 12 cantos of one book there is one hero but in every canto uh, the hero is same but in every book the hero changes so there is another hero in the other book in every book so this is something uh, there is a contradiction here moreover the importance of hero um, in the fairy queen the hero has got national significance here it's the prince arthur so he's got the historical importance uh, there is political significance of the hero so this element is according to an epic poem Mo next we have uh, the structure the unity of the poem uh, in some of the books the unity of structure is uh, like that of an epic but in some others it's a bit loose and it does not probably in book six it is a bit loose and it is not it is like the like a romance so these are some of the factors these are some uh, in which we can see that there is a little contradiction that whether to call the fairy queen an epic or a romance because it contains elements of both sometimes it has the um, it has most of the elements of an epic but some of the points are there where this epic it falls short of the that standard because usme ek certain characteristic features hain ki ek hi hero ke bare mein baat ki jani chahiye epic mein jo romance hai usme bahut sare logon ke actions ke bare mein baat ki ja sakti hai lekin jo baki characteristics hain epic ki wo sari isme maujood hain so uh, it is uh, to some extent we have we get we find the qualities of both an epic and a romance also but predominantly they are the qualities of an epic moreover uh, the epic action the epic action as we discussed earlier that the action of an epic is of a greater significance larger than life usme battles hain usme journeys hain usme uh, and it has got um, historical and national significance aur wo um, larger than life situations hain jahan par ke uh, epic hero jo hai wo triumphant hai so action bhi jo hai uh, there are differences in epic action and uh, the action in a romance 
then epic similes are different because in epic the similes are extended they are larger than life oh, is kadar extended similes hain extended metaphors usme use kiye gaye hain ke bahut bade paimane par unko compare kiya ja sakta hai jis tarah ke humne fairy queen mein dekha hai ke fairy queen mein uh, रिवर नाइल की सेमिली दी है जिसको के कंपेयर किया है जो मॉन्स्टर ने जो वॉमिट आउट किया है मटेरियल उस सब को उसके साथ रिवर नाइल के साथ कंपेयर किया गया है कि जब उसमें फ्लड आता है तो इट लीव्स बिहाइंड सम फर्टाइल मड हर जगह पर एक जो जरखेज मट्टी है उसकी तय बिछा जाता है जो कि उसके बाद जो उगाई जाने वाली फसलें होती हैं उनके लिए बहुत अच्छी होती हैं एपिक में सुपर नेचुरल मशीनरी होती है उसमें इंक्लूड होती हैं कुछ स्पिरिट्स का इंट्रोडक्शन होता है या फिर अंडर वर्ल्ड है कुछ गॉड्स और गॉडसेस का जिक्र होता है जो कि रोमांस में नहीं होता है हीरो वंस अगैन द हीरो ऑफ एन एपिक एंड रोमांस दे आर डिफरेंट एपिक में एक ही हीरो होता है रोमांस में नंबर ऑफ हीरोज हो सकते हैं नंबर ऑफ पीपल हो सकते हैं जिनमें से जिनके डीड्स ऑफ वेलर और ब्रेवरी के बारे में बात की जाएगी लेकिन एपिक में सिर्फ एक हीरो होता है एक डोमिनेंट पर्सन होता है जिसकी हिस्टोरिकल और पॉलिटिकल सिग्निफिकेंस होती है अ हाइब्रिड एपिक नाउ एन एपिक दैट हैज सम ऑफ द एलिमेंट्स ऑफ एपिक बट सम आर मिसिंग सो दैट इज कॉल्ड अ हाइब्रिड जो मिक्सचर हो जिसमें कुछ रोमांस के एलिमेंट्स हों और कुछ एपिक के हों उसको हाइब्रिड एपिक कहा जाएगा कि वो मिक्सचर है वो प्योरली एपिक भी नहीं है वो प्योरली रोमांस भी नहीं है जैसे फेरी क्वीन को जब हम डिस्कस करते हैं उसमें उसका अगर हम हीरो की बात करें तो हीरो ब्रेव है लार्जर देन लाइफ है प्रिंस आर्थर है उसमें एक उसकी हिस्टोरिकल या पॉलिटिकल सिग्निफिकेंस भी है सुपर नेचुरल मशीनरी है इट्स अ लॉन्ग नेरेटिव पोइम ये भी ठीक है मीडियस रेस के वो शुरू में वो मिडल में शुरू हो रही है उसमें अंडर वर्ल्ड जर्नीज हैं उसमें रेफरेंसेस हैं बहुत सारी जो डोमिनेंट करेक्टरिस्टिक्स हैं एपिक पोइम की वो सब उसमें इंक्लूडेड हैं लेकिन कुछ ऐसे पॉइंट्स हैं एपिक के जो इसमें मिसिंग है या जो उस तरीके से उसमें नहीं है जिस तरह से एपिक में होते हैं जैसे कि सिर्फ एक हीरो पर फोकस हो तमाम बुक्स में थ्रू आउट द पोइम स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम बुक वन टिल द लास्ट पेज ओनली द डीड्स ऑफ वन हीरो आर फोकस्ड इन एन एपिक ये चीज उसमें मिसिंग है इसके अलावा और भी बहुत सारे पार्ट्स हैं फिर इन्वोकेशन जो है वो मौजूद है सो सम पार्ट ऑफ इट रिजेंबल्स दैट ऑफ एन एपिक और सम पार्ट जो है वो एपिक के मुताबिक नहीं है वो कुछ किसी और योन्ड्रा के जो एलिमेंट्स हैं वो उसमें इंक्लूड कर दिए गए जैसे कि रोमांस के सो दिस इज अ हाइब्रिड एपिक जिसमें कि हम उसको हाइब्रिड रोमांस नहीं कह रहे वो हाइब्रिड एपिक है इन द सेंस के उसमें जो मेजर पार्ट है जो मेजर कैरेक्टरिस्टिक फीचर्स हैं वो एपिक के हैं और कम जो थोड़ी सी ऐसी चीजें हैं थोड़े से ऐसे एलिमेंट्स हैं जो कि एपिक के मुताबिक नहीं है जैसे कि एक ही हीरो नहीं है बुक वन से बुक सिक्स तक एक ही हीरो के डीड्स को फोकस नहीं किया गया हर बुक में एक डिफरेंट नाइट है हर बुक में एक डिफरेंट हीरो है तो दिस इज नोन एज हाइब्रिड के आपने आदि चीज ये ली है आदि ये ली है दोनों के करेक्टरिस्टिक्स को कंबाइन करके और जो उसमें डोमिनेंट पार्ट है उसका नाम उसे दे दिया गया हाइब्रिड मीन्स इट्स अ मिक्सड शॉर्ट दो चीजों का मिक्सचर है लेकिन एपिक इसलिए कि उसमें जो डोमिनेंट पार्ट है वो एपिक है डोमिनेंट पार्ट रोमांस का नहीं है जब रोमांस का पार्ट जो है वो सिर्फ इतना है उसमें कि उसमें एक हीरो नहीं है रोमांस में ज्यादा हीरो होते हैं तो दिस इज समथिंग इन रोमांस लेकिन वो उसके हाइब्रिड तो हो गया क्योंकि उसके एलिमेंट्स भी उसमें मौजूद हैं जो उसके कैरेक्टरिस्टिक फीचर्स हैं वो भी मौजूद हैं लेकिन जो डोमिनेंट फीचर्स हैं वो एपिक पॉइम के हैं अ रोमांटिक एपिक so it has the characteristic features of a romantic poem so that is the reason it is sometimes termed as a romantic epic it contains romance also as we see towards the end of book 1 the spirits both the spirits they try to allure the knight and to bring him to the worldly things to the materialistic things so to deceive him to distract him of his aim that he is doing okay another perspective um, this uh, first we discussed the elements of an epic then we discussed that how is it different from a romance and we discussed that um, how an epic is different from a romance
Spencer was a great Elizabethan poet. Rather, he is the greatest of the Elizabethan poets. So, uh, there are certain elements in his poetry that we can trace back as uh, belonging to the Renaissance and the Reformation both at the same time. So, first we will discuss the elements of the Renaissance and then we will talk about the elements of the Reformation. Uh, we discussed earlier also that there are certain characteristic features of the Renaissance because it was the beginning of new learning. There was interest in uh, humanism. There was a revival of classical learning. There was interest in adventures and um, uh, discovering new worlds. So all these characteristic features, they had influence on the writing of the age also. So Spencer, like his contemporaries, he was also influenced by the uh, traditions of the time, by the way uh, uh, whatever was happening around him, he was in also influenced by those um, fe characteristic features of his age. Uh, in his poem, The Fairy Queen, we find the spirit of adventure. Uh, the knight was on his way to the adventure. So the spirit of adventure, this is, this, um, ye renaissance ka ek, uh, characteristic feature tha, uske ek khasusiyat thi, aur hume ye element fairy queen mein bhi milta hai, jab hum fairy queen ke book one padhte hai, to knight aur lady una, they are in search of, a, of an adventure. And after they had slayed that, uh, uh, monster um, when they meet the old man it, the knight asks him that if he could tell him about some adventure nearby in the surrounding so um, they are in search of some adventure so the spirit of adventure is very much present in the fairy queen book one canto one love for beauty spencer ex during renaissance one of the characteristic feature was the love for beauty Spencer also uh, displayed that love for beauty. He described the scenes. He gave vivid descriptions of things. Usne bohat achhe tarikhe se chizon ko bohat detail me explain kiya hai. Usne scenes ko bohat detail me explain kiya hai. For example, when they entered the cave, first of all we get uh, the description of the night ke wo kis tarah se kahan ja raha tha kya kar raha tha usne kya pehna hua tha hame har cheez ki vivid description milti hai then uh, we get the description of lady una aur lady una ko usne bahut acche tarike se describe kiya hai ki uska complexion kaisa hai usne apne chehre par kya pehna hua hai ek veil hai aur har cheez ko bahut ek depth mein describe kiya gaya hai then we had the introduction to the uh, place uh, the cave जहाँ पर वो जा रहे हैं हमें हर सीन की डिस्क्रिप्शन बहुत विविड डिस्क्रिप्शन दी है कि जब केव में एंटर होने लगे तो कैसा सीन था क्या हुआ था इट वाज द स्काई वाज ओवर क्लाउडेड एंड दे वर फोर्स टू टेक शेल्टर जब उस उन्होंने उस केव के अंदर गए तो किस तरह की चीजें वहाँ मौजूद थी दे फाउंड डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ ट्रीज तो हमें हर तरह के दरख्त के बारे में सो स्पेंसर हैड नॉलेज अबाउट ऑल दीज थिंग्स और उसकी विविड डिस्क्रिप्शन हमें मिलती है and what are these things used for? Uski bohat achhi description hume di gai hai. Then love for richness and magnificence. Yes, magnificence. This element once again it is present in uh, the fairy queen. Another important element of Renaissance was the revival of old classical literature. Uh, if we look at the layout of the poem, uh, the fairy queen, we find that he had copied. He was greatly inspired by Aristotle, Plato, Virgil. Uh, um, Aristo and Tesso. So all these people, even um, like uh, the poets, uh, Homer and Virgil, he was greatly inspired by all these people. We had a number of instances. For example, uh, this book had a plan of uh, the fairy queen was planned um, as a book containing 12 books. Now, why 12 books? That because in each book there will be, the knight will represent a different virtue that was classified by Aristotle. So he was inspired by the writings of these classical um, writers. Then um, 
even Virgil, um, Homer, they had great influence and we find a num at a number of instances that he was influenced by them and he wanted to revive, revive that old classical literature. Classical mythology, uh, there are a number of uh, instances when we find references from mythology, the reference to the um, gods and goddesses at a number of places we find these references. Uh, the, uh, the the reference to Cleo, the goddess of history, the reference to the goddess of beauty, Venus, the reference to the god of uh, sun, uh, Jove, uh, Phoebus, uh, the reference to the god of war, Mars, the reference to the um, god of um, sleep, Morpheus, the reference to goddess of uh, underworld, then a number of other references were also there. We get many references like this, in which we know that he was an ardent supporter of the use of classical mythology. Because this classical mythology was also a characteristic feature tha of classical literature, so he also revived it. So this is another characteristic feature of the age, that in the Renaissance, there was a spirit thi, के लोग इंक्लाइन थे लोग क्लासिकल माइथोलॉजी को बहुत ज़्यादा यूज़ कर रहे थे बहुत ज़्यादा रेफरेंसेस उनके राइटिंग्स में मिलते थे सो द सेम स्पिरिट इज़ फाउंड इन स्पेंसर्स फेरी क्वीन आल्सो एन अदर characteristic feature of the age was the सीरियसनेस एंड मॉरल अर्नेसनेस सो सेंस एन इम्पोर्टेंट फीचर ऑफ instead of the authorities of the church. So once again, this um, responsibility was felt when we read the text of the fairy queen, we find this moral seriousness in, um, in its text also. Then there was a tradition to write in epic form. Um, this was a general trend at that time. Everybody wanted to write in the epic form. So this was a convention. This was this genre of writing poetry was very famous. So he followed the tradition. He was inspired by the characteristic features of the age के उस वक्त में उस उन उस जमाने में जो कुछ हो रहा था वो उन सारे एलिमेंट से वो भी इंस्पायर्ड था उसने उन सारी चीजों को अपनी पोइट्री में भी रिफ्लेक्ट किया है सिंस ही वाज इन्फ्लुएंस्ड बाय ऑल दिस थिंग्स बाय ऑल दिस ट्रेडिशंस दैट वर हैपनिंग अराउंड हिम वो एक ह्यूमनिज्म है वो पैट्रियोटिक है उसमें प्लेटोनिक लव है सो ऑल दिस थिंग्स वी फाइंड इन हिज पोइट्री आल्सो so uh, we can say that he is a poet who represents his age, he, rep he is the representative poet of the renaissance since he embodies all the characteristic features of his age in his poetry. This is true because we find these elements in his poetry, the fairy queen. Okay, the elements of reformation, there were certain elements of reformation also because a reformation was a religious movement. It was a revolt against the authority of the church because earlier um, the Roman Catholic Church held supremacy. It was supreme and it had the dogmatic authority. Us, bhi orders aate the, wo har kisi ko follow karne ho padte the. Lekin, uh, England mein, logon mein ek, uh, patriotic feeling aagai thi, wo soch chaate thai ke why Roman Catholic Church, they should have their independent religious institution jisko wo follow karein. Ya phir insaan ki apni jo self-conscience hai, us par rely karna chahiye. Har insaan ko khud right or wrong ka pata hona chahiye. To is tarah se ye church, ye sab log jo hai, wo church ki authority ke khilaaf thai. So protestants rose against Roman Catholic Church and these protestants they were against the religious authority the authority of the roman catholic church so we find protestants first this term was used in germany where um, they protested against the roman catholic church and later on the name pr from the protest it was given to these people another important element of reformation was platonic or epicurean but we see that um, no matter he was platonic in his thinking or in his ideas and he was epicurean also because epicurean is somebody who feels that eat drink and be merry um, for um, tomorrow may come or it may not come so everybody should live a happy life a happy gay life so 
we find these elements but at the same time we find that he was a true protestant also he hated the roman catholic church at a number of instances in the poem in the text of fairy queen we find that he hated the, the authority the dogmatic um, teachings the preaching of the roman catholic church for example uh, one example is uh, when the monster when the knight gets hold of the monster's stomach and the monster vomits out everything he uh, refers to the books and ink that are all black and he there are frogs and toads also this shows his hatred this incident the presence of all do, those things they have got the religious uh, significance and this shows his hatred uski nafrat zahir hoti hai sari cheez se how much he hated the roman catholic church aur uski authority aur sare ko wo kitni usse mutanaffar tha so he was a true protestant he was a religious person he was a true protestant but he hated the roman catholic church since he was inspired by the spirit of the age kyunki us zamane mein patriotic feelings unme ka rise tha har koi jo hai wo sochta tha ki why roman catholic church unke paas उनकी अपने एक राइट और रॉन्ग का सेंस होना चाहिए हर इंसान को उसके राइट एंड रॉन्ग के सेंस के लिए रिस्पॉन्सिबल होना चाहिए इफ वी हैव द रीकैप ऑफ दिस लेक्चर थर्टीन वी डिस्कस्ड द फेरी क्वीन दैट अपेरेंटली इट इज अ स्टोरी एंड इट इज अ स्टोरी ऑफ अ नाइट हु वॉज फाइटिंग फॉर लेडी ऊना विद हिम देर वॉज लेडी ऊना अडवाफ एंड अ लैम ऑल्सो एंड ही वॉज गोइंग ऑन ऑल दीज पीप दे वर गोइंग ऑन अ जर्नी टू गेट बैक द कास्टल ऑफ लेडी ऊनाज फादर फ्रॉम द फ्रॉम द ड्रैगन फ्रॉम द मॉन्स्टर देन वी डिस्कस्ड the beginning of the uh, fairy queen it was invocation it consisted of only four stanzas but it is very important because it sets uh, the background for the entire poem which consists of uh, six books and each book contains 12 cantos so invocation is very important invocation refers to seeking help from um, gods and goddesses and some uh, uh, very extraordinary person in fairy queen spencer invokes help from the muse of history cleo he invokes help from um, the goddess of beauty venus he invokes help from uh, uh, cupid the god of love and uh, he invokes help from mars the god of war and finally he invokes help from um, the um, queen elizabeth then we discussed that an epic is a long narrative poem it should have all the elements of a poem that include um, the invocation the use of a supernatural machinery a great soldier or a warrior there should be battle there should be journey there should be the inclusion of the supernatural elements the journey to the underworld and the certain literary devices should also be used like uh, transferred epithet epithet and uh, we had the use of the um, epic similes that are extended similes then we discussed the elements of the renaissance that uh, there are different characteristic features of the age ke us um, us daur ke kuch कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स थी कुछ खसूसियात थी जो बहुत प्रोमिनेंट थी और और कुछ कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स रेफॉर्मेशन की थी जो कि दोनों ही हमें फेरी क्वीन में बुक वन में कैंटो में हमें मिलते हैं रेनेसो की कुछ कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स थी जिनमें ह्यूमनिज्म है प्लेटोनिक लव है रिवाइवल ऑफ क्लासिकल लर्निंग है ग्रीक माइथोलॉजी से रेफरेंसेस हैं ये सारी चीजें एंड देन रेफॉर्मेशन वाज आर रिवोल्ट अगेंस्ट द सेट अथॉरिटी ऑफ द चर्च बिकॉज दे वर प्रोटेस्टेंट्स दे हेटेड द रोमन कैथोलिक चर्च एंड देर वॉज अ सिवियर हेटरेड इन द माइंड ऑफ पीपल all these things are reflected the characteristic features of the renaissance and the reformation both are reflected in the fairy queen and we can quote a number of instances of these elements hum iski example se fairy queen ki book 1 canto 1 se bahut si examples dekar isko prove kar sakte hain ke fairy queen mein renaissance aur reformation dono ke elements bahut zyada maujood the and he was 
इन्फ्लुएंस्ड बाय द स्पिरिट ऑफ द एज रेनेसो में ह्यूमनिज्म था फोकस था मैन पर मैन वाज गिवन इंपॉर्टेंस क्योंकि रेनेसो के दौरान जो रिवाइवल ऑफ रीबर्थ थी लर्निंग की स्कॉलरशिप की क्लासिकल राइटर्स के वर्क्स को ट्रांसलेट किया जा रहा था उनको उनको अहमियत दी जा रही थी उन्होंने जिस तरीके से लिखा था जिस मॉडल पर उन्होंने लिखा था उसको फोकस किया जा रहा था बिकॉज दोज क्लासिकल राइटर्स दे हैड रिटन लॉन्ग नेरेटिव पॉइंट्स उन्होंने बहुत लंबी पॉइंट्स लिखी थी जिन्होंने जिसमें उन्होंने एक स्टैंडर्ड सेमिलीज और ये सारा कुछ यूज किया था पोइट्स uh, उसी तरीके से उसी मॉडल को फॉलो करते हुए पोइट्स जो इस दौर में लिख रहे थे रेनोसा में लिख रहे थे वो उनको फॉलो करने की कोशिश कर रहे थे इंक्लूडिंग देयर राइटिंग स्टाइल द काइंड ऑफ लैंग्वेज दे यूज्ड हर तरीके से उसको एज अ मॉडल वो लोग फॉलो कर रहे थे जिसमें के हमारे पास नंबर ऑफ एलिमेंट्स हैं जो के कैरेक्टरिस्टिक फीचर्स हैं उस एज के वो सब इन पोइट्स ने कॉपी करने की कोशिश की थी जैसे कि क्लासिकल मैथोलॉजी के रेफरेंसेस हैं उसको यूज किया जा रहा था लैंग्वेज जो है बहुत एलिवेटेड यूज की जा रही थी फिर The spirit of adventure was very prominent. हर कोई जो है वो नई दुनिया दरियाफ्त करने जा रहा था जैसे जैसे कि उस जमाने में हो रहा था जैसे वस्कोडे गामा कोलम्बस और बहुत सारे लोग जो थे वो उन्होंने मुख्तलिफ जगहों पर जो है वो नई दुनिया दरियाफ्त की थी और वहां पर जा और लोगों ने वहां माइग्रेट कर लिया था वहां जाकर अपने आप को इस्टेब्लिश कर लिया था सो so, ये सारे एलिमेंट कैरेक्टरिस्टिक फीचर्स जो हैं रेनेसो के रेफर्मेशन के लव फॉर ब्यूटी रिवाइवल फॉर लर्निंग रिवाइवल ऑफ क्लासिकल लर्निंग रेफरेंसेस फ्रॉम क्लासिकल माइथोलॉजी ये सब हमें पोइट्री uh, में मिलते हैं uh, सिर्फ न सिर्फ स्पेंसर uh, की पोइट्री में हमें और भी जो इसके कंटेम्प्रेरीज हैं वो सब ये चीजें यूज कर रहे थे एंड देन रेफर्मेशन refer to the revolt against the set authority of the church people were against the roman catholic church uh, one reason was that it had become corrupt kyunki wo jo highest uh, jo strata hai jo highest uh, ek uh, institution hai wo corrupt ho chuka tha to wo jo corruption hai it was passed down to all the um, churches that uh, were controlled by the roman catholic church us uh, ek to ye reason tha aur dusre patriotic reason tha people felt that everybody should be held responsible for his own deeds to so self conscious honi chahiye har kisi ko apni uh, jo deeds hain apni jo uh, उसके काम है उसको अपने लिए खुद राइट और रॉन्ग का इंतखा करना है उसको खुद डिसाइड करना है कि उसके लिए क्या सही है और क्या गलत है सो देर वॉज द इमरजेंस ऑफ द प्रोटेस्टेंट्स सो अगेंस्ट द रोमन कैथोलिक चर्च देर वॉज द इमरजेंस ऑफ प्रोटेस्टेंट्स इन इंग्लैंड इन द नेक्स्ट लेक्चर वी विल सी एट सम अदर फेसेट्स सम अदर परस्पेक्टिव फ्रॉम विच वी कैन एनालाइज द फेरी क्वीन अल्लाह हाफिज